The Nissan LEAF was one of the first practical EVs to go on sale in the US, but we never fell in love with it thanks to its odd looks and less than slur range. Nissan is now working on the next LEAF, and we hope the automaker does a better job with the styling this time around. We still know very little about the second generation LEAF, but Nissan has just revealed a bit of information about the car on its company website. The new LEAF will debut Nissan's Pro Pilot Assist technology, which will allow the car to drive itself on the highway. Nissan claims this new system is meant to reduce the hassle of stop-and-go highway driving. The system will control acceleration, braking and steering during single-lane highway driving. In the coming years, the technology will be upgraded to eventually be able to navigate city intersections. This system sounds very similar to Tesla's autopilot as well as many adaptive cruise control systems that we have tested recently. The prospect of the car steering itself seems like a worthy addition, but modern adaptive cruise control systems basically do self-driving and stop-and-go traffic already. We have noticed these systems can get confused by cars that suddenly merge ahead of it, so we'll be interested to see if Nissan system is able to improve on this issue. Perhaps this technology will be the key selling point to finally make us love the LEAF. Nissan is trying to return its all-electric LEAF to its former state of glory. The Nissan LEAF is the world's best-selling electric car, but that's largely been a product of it being a very early, affordable contender in the electric vehicle space. The LEAF, which can drive 107 miles on a single charge has lately been eclipsed by incumbents like the Chevy Bolt, a $37,495 car with 238 miles of range. As Tesla prepares to officially launch its mass-market Model 3 in July, Nissan's LEAF is set to get more competition. But Nissan is gearing up for a fair fight. The automaker will attempt to challenge Tesla's autopilot by installing its Pro Pilot Assist in the 2018 LEAF which is expected to drive 200 miles on a single charge. ProPilot allows vehicles to drive autonomously on highways by keeping the car in a single lane even when the road curves. The system will also automatically brake if it detects an obstacle in front of it. ProPilot, which is essentially adaptive cruise control, is not as sophisticated as Tesla Autopilot, which offers active cruise control, forward collision warning, auto steer, and automatic parallel parking. By the end of the year, Autopilot will be able to handle even more complex tasks, like automatic lane changes and the ability to merge on and off highways. But Nissan has big plans for its ProPilot technology, saying it will support Level 4 autonomous driving by 2020. That means the cars can handle any driving scenario without relying on a driver. Nissan first installed its ProPilot technology in its Serena minivans in Japan last August. As part of its ramp-up efforts, Nissan said last year that ProPilot will allow cars to automatically change lanes by 2018. A Nissan spokesperson declined to say whether the 2018 LEAF will come with the automatic lane change feature, but said the automaker is still committed to its 2020 timeline. If not next year, Nissan will need to add features like automatic lane change soon if it wants to compete with Tesla. In the same week that Polestar, Volvo's high-performance tuning arm, revealed that it's about to go it alone as performance car company specializing in fully electric vehicles, Audi has confirmed that its first fully electric premium family sports car will be a market reality in 2019. The Audi e-tron Sportback concept was one of the stars of this year's Shanghai Auto Show and now it is destined to go from show-stopping design study to real-world emissions-free performance car in less than two years. In auto show form, the high-sided four-door Grand Turismo Coupe is capable of traveling 310 miles on a single charge and, thanks to having three electric motors, one at each rear wheel and one mounted on the front axle splitting power left and right, can accelerate off the line and onto 100 km per hour in just 4.5 seconds and should remain glued to the road no matter the speed or cornering force. 
The combined output of those motors means that the car has over 500 horsepower to draw on but the total output is only served up when absolute performance is required, not unlike the Kerr system on Formula 1 cars that provides an extra boost for overtaking. Those performance figures, plus the car's proportions, it has roughly the same wheelbase as the existing Audi A7, suggests that it will be sharing some technology with the Porsche Michelin, which also stole the show when it debuted in Frankfurt in 2015 and which is slated to go into production before decades end. In true Audi fashion, the Sportback is being described as an entirely new model segment, in as much as it takes the lines and proportions of a four-door coupe and applies them to the crossover segment. However, even here it can't claim to be the first as Aston Martin has already performed that particular optical illusion with the DBX concept, unveiled in Geneva in 2016 and also getting ready to go into production as a full-on EV. Before the sport bag goes on sale, Audi will be testing the water with the e-tron electric SUV. It is going into production in 2018 and like the Sportback is to be built at the company's Belgian plant. The Audi e-tron Sportback, the second electric vehicle to wear a softly glowing version of the German luxury brand Sporting logo, will go into production in 2019, the car maker has confirmed. The compact Sportback will join the plainly named e-tron, an electric SUV due next year. As Audi's battery fuel push gains momentum, it is the second of three new all-electric vehicles the brand aims to build. The third is expected to be a Q6 e-tron, built off an upcoming fastback-styled version of the Q7 March SUV. The futuristic bones of the production e-tron Sportback will come from a similarly named concept vehicle unveiled in Shanghai earlier this year. A four-door Grand Tourismo coupe that uses a 320 kW electric drive system. Audi confirmed at the time that the Sportback would be built in 2019, but didn't say where. The Audi A7 styled e-tron Sportback's electric motor should be able to make the sprint from 0 to 100 km per hour in about 4.5 seconds, helped by 800 newton meters of stump pulling thrust available from almost a standstill and sent to all four wheels. And just like a turbo car, the e-tron Sportback is expected to include an overbust function that will bump power to 380 kW for up to 10 seconds. As for range? Expect around 500 km of reach from the battery pack hidden under the floor, an idea pioneered in the Mercedes-Benz B-Class but since adopted by other electric car makers including Tesla. The Shanghai concept includes some clever thinking, such as luminescent interior panels that provide ambient light without the need to use energy-sapping bulbs. Yes, you still need to power up the panels, but Audi says the drain on the electrical system is a lot less. The production car will spin off the Volkswagen Group's MEB modular electrification toolkit platform that will underpin the group's future battery-powered vehicles. Other concepts built off the platform include the Volkswagen ID, the Combi-styled ID Buzz, and the Pod-like Buddy. Volkswagen's first product built off the platform, a golf-sized hatchback is expected in 2020. What is it? It's the delightful, fun-to-drive Mazda MX-5 RF. The RF stands for retractable fastback, and in the wonderful world of sports cars, the MX-5 stands head and shoulders above the rest in terms of global sales. Early last year, the nimble little roadster passed a significant milestone in its 27-year history when the 1 millionth MX-5 was produced. There's not a sports car in history that comes close to that figure. The actual car has just completed a 35-event promotional program that included the UK, Spain, USA, Belgium, Canada, Australia and New Zealand that saw more than 10,000 people sign their name on the bodywork. It's now on display at Mazda's Hiroshima headquarters. To add to the celebrations, the Japanese mark decided to add a striking new variant to the model lineup. The RF is a cleverly designed car for drivers who want the best of both worlds, a roadster and a coupe. Rather than a coupe, 
However, the beautifully designed folding roof transforms the car into more of a Porsche 911, Targa-like car. And, with the roof folded away, there's plenty of sky and fresh air to be enjoyed. Since the first MX-5 saw the light of day more than a quarter of a century ago, there have been just four generations and the latest, dubbed the ND, arrived here in soft top guys back in August 2015. In total around 20,000 MX-5s have found homes in Australian garages. The first model to feature a folding metal roof was the previous generation NC and now the ND Roadster has been joined by its new RF sibling. What's it cost? While the soft top ND is available in either 1.5 litre or 2.0 litre form, the new RF is a 2.0 litre only car. Pricing kicks off at $38,550 for the entry-level version with a six-speed manual transmission and cloth interior. This rises to $43,890 for the manual RF GT with black or tan leather and $44,890 for the top-spec RF GT with a black roof and Napa leather. A six-speed automatic transmission is available across the range for an additional $2,000. Red and grey metallic paint adds another $300. In terms of standard kit, the new offering is generously specified. All three variants come with goodies including LED headlights and daytime running lights, air conditioning, cruise control, a 7-inch touchscreen with Mazda's MZD Connect system, Bluetooth phone and audio connectivity, satellite navigation, blind spot monitoring, with internet radio integration via Pandora, Stitcher and Aha. Move up to the RF GT and you add leather trim, automatic on-off headlights, a premium 9-speaker 203-watt Bose system and climate control air conditioning. What's it go like? The RF Suite 2.0 liter in line 4 boasts 16 valves and a double overhead camshaft layout and is good for 118 kilowatts at 6000 rpms and 200 newton meters of torque that arrives at 4600 rpms. Mazda claims combined fuel consumption figures of 7.0 L-100 km for the manual version and 7.4 L-100 km for the automatic. During the national media launch, my co-driver and I saw 6.8 L-100 km and 7.2 L-100 km respectively. The star of the RF show is undoubtedly its superbly designed and executed electric folding roof. It adds 45 kilograms of extra weight to the car, but really, you'd never know. Push a button and the roof opens in just 13 seconds and this operation can can be performed on the move up to a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. But if the heavens opened and you wanted to stay dry, it would be more sensible to pull over and stop. That said, to watch the RF's roof in operation is to watch a piece of brilliant, not to mention whisper quiet, slow motion engineering gymnastics. The mechanism uses 14 separate linkages and two electric motors that combine in a masterful way to stow the roof in a compartment in front of the boot. The front of the roof is aluminium, the center section is steel and the rear flying buttress type wings are plastic. They lift to let the roof fold away and then sit down to lock in the RF's Targa-style open roof arrangement. Visually, the wings give the RF a look that's reminiscent of the classic Dino, it didn't have a Ferrari badge, and the Jaguar XJS that was around in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Even that classic Australian, the Bowell Nagari Coupe, used the flying buttress design, but the Nagari's flying buttresses stayed put as part of the body structure. Inside, the new RF, even at entry level, is a pretty classy place to be. Trim details and fit and finish are what we've come to expect from Mazda and while this 185cm reviewer couldn't quite dial up his ideal driving position, I owned an NBMX5 for a year, things are perfect for me behind the wheel of the ND Roadster and RF. 
What is sadly lacking are many cubby holes for your bits and pieces and the lack of reach adjustment for the steering wheel is something of a shortcoming. There's no glove box, no door pockets, just a small lidded tray at the rear of the center console and a small lockable compartment between the seat backs. There are two cup holders, also mounted between the seat backs, but they are all but useless even for small bottles. Fortunately, the brilliant design means there is still 127 liters of luggage space, enough for a couple of carry-on suitcases. While the engineers tweaked the front and rear suspension for the RF, you'd have to be a genius to pick any ride and handling differences over its soft top sibling. Mazda does some of the best manual gearboxes in the world and the MX-5s is no exception. While it's not a dual-clutch auto, the six-speeder found in all MX-5s is a gem, slick shifting and fun to use in manual mode. In the safety department, as well as front and side airbags, the 5-star AMC AP rated RF comes standard with ABS brakes, dynamic stability and traction control, blind spot monitoring, electronic brake force distribution, emergency brake assist, an emergency stop signal, hill launch assist and there is even a clever active bonnet that pops up to help protect a pedestrian's head the instant an impact is detected. One negative is that while autonomous emergency braking is available on other Mazda offerings, it's not on the MX-5. While blind spot monitoring is essential given that the flying buttress is certainly endowed the car with blind spots, a reversing camera would and should improve things no end. In summary, the new RF continues to be a delightful driver's car that rewards the steer in many ways. The car's balance and poise through corners is legendary and the RF's ability to transform from a sports coupe to a Targa-like open-top sports car adds to its appeal for buyers who aren't totally sold on a soft top. What we like. Legendary MX-5 behind the wool fun. Classy coupe styling with the roof up. Overall driving dynamics. Great manual and automatic transmissions. Stylish and practical interior styling. What we don't. Stingy 3-year warranty. Limited interior storage cubby holes. Autonomous emergency braking not available. No steering wheel reach adjustment. Limited rear vision with roof up. Seat backs a tad narrow for anyone but jockeys. What are the alternatives? Unless you want to mortgage the house for a car with an exotic badge such as Audi, Aston Martin, Mercedes-Benz, BMW or Lamborghini, there are many wind in the hair sports cars from which to choose these days. Some lesser priced offerings include the 1.4 litre Abarth 124 Spider with its $41,990 price tag, the 2.0 litre Mini Cooper S2 door convertible that comes in at $46,500 and although it is much larger, the Ford Mustang 2.3 EcoBoost that requires a $54,990 chic, if you can get one. Deal or no deal? Mazda launched the RF with high hopes for its sales success and the company has not been disappointed. While most soft top purists will probably stick with the MX-5 Roadster, the RF is attracting a new subclass, and probably older, group of buyers.